but I want to give you a secondary method. So underneath where you've done this, right, do a little rule off. Um, maybe you could label this as, the we, we went through the indefinite integral, that's how we did it. This is not the only tool we have access to, and um, there's actually a more elegant tool here, which I'm going to teach you not because you need to use it, but number one, it's just, it's just cool. It's a great method, right? It's actually, it's more efficient, right? And you'll see why in a second. And then number two, it actually relates back to, can you guys remind me, just because I haven't taught you all year, how much stats have you done? You've done a fair bit of stats, right? Have you done continuous random variables yet? You've done discrete? Okay, so what that means is, my second reason is, what I'm about to show you here will anticipate something that you're going to do when you do continuous random variables, okay? So, the little subheading I'd like you to make here is, using the definite integral, using the definite integral. Now, if you have an eyebrow raised at this point, uh, that would be justifiable because you might say, Mr. Wu, how can we use a definite integral here? You need like some boundaries, yeah? Like a lower boundary, upper boundary. There is, or there are boundaries actually hiding in this question. We just need to find them. Park that thought for a second. Let me explain how this is going to work. We know the basic shape of any definite integral, right? You're integrating something, in this case, if it was f dash, right? And we pointed out in the original version, oh, we have no boundaries here, right? So you're going to get a plus c, no big deal. Our default, like our formulaic uh, conventional boundaries, would be called a and b, right? It's like, oh, here's a lower one, here's an upper one. What happens when you are doing a definite integral? What would be the next step? I'll give you a clue. It's something, take away something else. Any takers? F of, yeah, F of what? F of something. Very good, the upper bound, we evaluate, we integrate, and then we evaluate that thing at the upper bound, and then we evaluate it at the lower bound, so F of A, right? Now, um, if you, this might have been a while ago, but if you haven't heard this phrase, this thing is so important, it gets a big fancy name. Um, it's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's like, ooh, pay attention, right? This is a big deal, okay? Now, when I first learned this, I was like, yeah, great, but I don't really need to care about this thing itself because it's just so that I can get on with other questions, right? But actually, there's the reason why it gets such a big fancy name is because how immensely powerful it is. Let me show you how. Um, first, oops, that's not the one I want, that's fine. Um, I want you to notice, see the X's in here? In here? They kind of, they appear for a moment, they appear on this next line once I've integrated, but then, as soon as I'm ready, they disappear because I put in actual numbers like 5 or 18, right? So the x appears and then it vanishes. It's just there kind of as a placeholder. So as a consequence, it actually gets a, um, to represent the fact that it's sort of there for a moment and then disappears. It's actually given a special name. It's called a dummy variable. Um, you might see this appear in textbooks. They refer to this idea um, whereby the x is going to appear, but then you quickly substitute it for something else. Because I can literally, I can put anything I like in there in x. I could put um, t. I could put theta. I could put angad. I mean, it would be awkward, but I could, right? And then I would quickly sum it out. So therefore, just stay with me, right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this line like so. A, B. And instead, I'm just going to put a different variable in there, a different dummy variable. Okay? Um, I'm going to use u because that's a traditional letter we use when we're substituting things. Tell me, if I change this on the left-hand side, not a trick question, what changes on the right-hand side? Nothing. Not, nothing, because the whole point is it's a dummy variable. It doesn't do anything. It's just there to stand in for a moment until I can put real numbers in. So it's still f of b, take away f of a. Is that okay? All right. Now here comes the magical move, right? All I'm trying to do is set up what my alternative is to this method, okay? The magical move is I can put in any A or B here that I want. It's kind of the point, right? Any value will work. Usually we pick some based on what the question tells us. There are some values here that I could pick for A and B that would be useful to me based on what this question tells me. One of the values is obvious, one of them is not. Does anyone want to have a stab in the dark? There's not many numbers in this question, so just have a guess. Now zero is a, is a common useful thing because we like zeros. Zeros of integrate and differentiate nicely. It's ooh, simple stuff, right? The reason in this case I'm not going to go to zero is because when I sort of 
uh, scan my eyes through this question, I'm like, oh, no zeros really appearing, at least in this example, okay? What I do have though is, look, I've got f of b, f of a, right? I literally only have a single f of something over there on the left-hand side in terms of actual numbers. What have I got? f of 1, right there, right? So what I could do is I could make one of these 1. And then I can just, if that was f of 1, I could just put a 3 there, okay? So that's what I'd like you to do with me. We're going to make a equal 1. So I'm going to write f of 1 here. The other place that a appears is over here as the lower boundary. Is that okay? So I'm going to integrate from 1 to something, okay? This is all still here. Okay, now there's a lower bound. That's where it was hiding. I know it was not obvious that, that should be a lower boundary, but we can just make it the lower boundary. That's fine. Now I have to choose the other one. Now I said this was non-obvious, but I wonder if you can help me out. What is the end line? What's the destination I'm headed to? Like the goal of the question is f of x. That's, that's the thing I'm supposed to find, right? So it would be really nice. Sorry, I just accidentally leaned on my arm and I just got vaccinated. Um, what would be really nice to find is if f of x appeared somewhere in here, right? That would be really sweet. It would just kind of fall out, right? Now, do you see, I have this f of b that's just kind of sitting there waiting to have something done to it, right? What if, I know it's a bit weird because we normally put numbers into our boundaries, but x is a number. It's just, I don't know what the number is. It's still a number, right? So what if I made this, this, x? I'm going to write f of x. There's a takeaway there, right? If I made that an x, where's the other place the x goes? Just over here. It's the upper boundary. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I just want you to make a, a weird mysterious note, okay? Right here, I'm going to ask you to um, put in something that is not going to make sense until you get to the end of continuous random variables. But when you come back, Mrs. Lee's will be like, why did you write this on your book? And then she'll be like, aha, I see where this is going. Just write this into me, uh, in, into your book for me. If someone wants an explanation today, I'd be happy to give it to them. But for now, it's just kind of a, I'm just laying a clue for you in the future. It says PDF, that's an arrow, it's a very messy arrow. PDF to CDF. I'll explain it later if you're right. Okay, all the pieces are ready. You're looking at this thinking, what, what does this even mean? Well, now watch how beautifully, now we're going to solve the question, and I'm going to do it in half the space and half the time. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to integrate from 1 to x. Now, f dash of u. I know what f dash of x is, so f dash of u, I just replace all the x's with u. Right? So I'm going to write in here for u minus 1, right? Instead of 4x minus 1. Is that okay? And I'm doing it with respect to you. Is that okay? All right, great. Over here on the right-hand side, I've got f of x. That's not going to change. That's the thing I want. This is going to become the, um, the we're going to make this the subject of our equation at the end, and I'll be finished, right? So I'm just going to write f of x there. You know what f of 1 is. The question told you f of 1 is just equal to 3. Okay. This, quest, this step here, I call it the setup, right? It takes some thought, it takes me understanding, you know, explaining to you what this is meaning, but now that you know, you can just go straight here. If I was actually solving the question myself, in fact, when I was solving the question myself, this was the first line I wrote down, okay? Now let's do it, okay? I've got a definite integral here. I know how to do definite integrals. I'm going to integrate this, and I'm going to substitute in each of the boundaries. Now, lucky for you, we actually have already integrated this, right? It's going to be 2u squared, minus u, right? 2u squared minus u. So let's go ahead. 2u squared minus u. There's, I've integrated it. And what I'm going to put in is 1 and x. Is that okay? Now just because that's so easy, I'm also going to tidy up a little bit over here. See how I've got f of x minus 3? I actually eventually just want f of x by itself. Is that okay? So are you alright if I just add 3 to both sides? You're following so far? Add 3 here means I add 3 there, it's gone. Yep. Now let's go ahead and do the substitution. I'm going to be even lazier and I'm going to put f of x over here and make it the subject. It's ready to go, right? What happens when you put x into here? 2x squared minus x. I mean, you hardly even need to think, just changing one letter for another. What happens when you put 1 in here? 
you get minus, you get two minus one. Is that right? Yes? So I'm actually, this is, this is here, and I'm subtracting one. Uh, yes? No, 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 no. I, I haven't written, I've just done the integral, right? I've just done the integral, and now I've got plus three. Is that okay? Did you see where the plus three came from? Hmm, hold on a second. I think I lost someone, some of you for a brief moment, right? Where did this, where did this come from? You, did you just do another step? Did you just do the next step, or? I didn't do this step. Okay, sure, okay. So, that's fine with me. As long as I know where we're confused, that's okay. I was putting in one into here. Two times one minus one. That gives me this. You okay with that? And then the plus three is just hanging around. And then, I mean, I'm done, right? Two x squared minus x. They have no like terms. Minus one plus three. In fact, if I were doing this myself, I wouldn't even have written this line because I'm like, I can, I can do that arithmetic in my head. Okay. So what is the attraction? Yes, yeah, I'll just show you off this point. Okay. What is the attraction of this method? Two things. Number one, I know we had to do a bit of thinking first, right? But you should never shy away from thinking a little bit so that you can be lazier later is the first reason, right? Because you can just look like I don't have to do three separate steps. Like it's like, what do I do now when I'm finished this? Oh, I do the next thing, right? This is all just, once you set up this first line, you just flick the dominoes over and they begin. Right? Your integration brain takes over, and then the answer appears. Right? And secondly, uh, you will get to continuous random variables, and you will learn about an object called a probability density function that you're going to need to turn into a cumulative distribution function. And this trick right here, the one that I said was unnecessary for this question, is kind of a bonus. right? It no longer becomes a bonus. You have to wrestle with this, and I've seen many years of students get really confused. This is a relatively new part of the course, right? Um, this thing here, okay? And this is the move that you're going to pull. So, let me go right back to the start. 99% of you, for 99% of questions, will do this. Totally fine with me. It works. That's the reason I showed it to you first, okay? However, it's really worth trying to wrestle with this to see if you understand what's going on. I'll leave all the working there. Um, and if you have any questions about it, please let me know. 